Hi, my name is Adora Svitok. Uh, I'm not going to bother introducing myself. This is just the second one of my weekly updates where I'm going to be discussing issues that come to mind that I think might be interesting. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my favorite books and movies because this is a question that I get asked quite a lot, whether it's when I'm speaking to students or if I'm, you know, just talking to people, it's always, what are your favorite books? And I guess this is a really a natural question, considering that I do write and read quite a bit, and it seems to be always the primary one asked to writers. So, uh, to save you the trouble of asking me this in person, I'll just, uh, give you a rundown of my favorite books. They can be easily found by going to facebook.com slash adorespeetalk and checking out my book interests, but... Uh, basically, I'll give an explanation of a few of them and why I like them so much. Some of them are short stories, most of them are novels, some of them are series. So obviously Harry Potter, that sort of, does not need explanation unless you come from a different planet. Uh, All Quiet on the Western Front, I actually just finished rereading it the other day. I read it when I was like 11, 12? It was a little while ago when, when my older cousin was reading in her high school literature class. You're saying, I don't think I quite... It was a really good book. I understood it was a really good book then, but I didn't quite read it that carefully. So I think that's one of the advantages of careful rereading, or sometimes even not so careful rereading, is that you get the chance to see what you missed and to kind of have a different take on it. Because the first time that you read a book, I find that you uh, are... If it's especially if it's a suspenseful one, you're kind of rushing through it, you're hoping to get to the end. And the advantage of rereading it is that it doesn't have to be necessarily so plot driven. When I reread Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, it's not because I want to find out what's happened to Harry. Everybody knows that. I'm not gonna spoil it for anyone who hasn't read the book, but uh, I'm I'm not rereading it to find that out. I'm rereading it to see the parts that I missed, to make sure I, uh, that McGonagall survived or something like that. Uh, so when you reread books, it does give you the chance to identify things you might not have noticed, maybe the beauty of prose in a certain line or uh, character deaths or something like that. So rereading is something I really highly recommend if you want to get to know a book better. So All Quiet on the Western Front I just reread today and it was um, a, a really amazing book. I highly recommend it to anyone who uh, well, you don't even have to be really that interested in World War One. You could just be reading it for the sake of learning more about somebody's testament and the effect that war has on people, especially the young. And so it was uh, uh, an amazing book. And it's really hard to summarize. I mean, you could summarize it in a very trite sentence, like uh, seven people who went to class together go and fight in World War One, and all of them, well, I'm not going to spoil it for you. It's a depressing book, but the... You um, you could summarize books like that. You can summarize The Great Gatsby by saying it's a rich person who lives in New York and unrequited love and all that, but it doesn't it doesn't sum up the book in a way that makes people understand the feelings of the character, the beauty of the language. There's so much about a book that gets cut out when you kind of summarize it in a spark note, or you you just um, kind of read it for the plot instead of the language, you know, so that's one of the advantages of rereading again is you don't need to worry about what happened. You can look closely and appreciate it from more of a language point of view. So uh, I like rereading. The Ray Gatsby is another favorite of mine. Um, Fitzgerald, I'm actually not really fond of his other work. Uh, I read one of his, we, we read his short stories sometimes from a literature book, like Winter Dreams. They weren't that good. I think that the time period of the 1920s, it was sort of like overall really depressing and the World War One was over and that was that whole culture of the time. But Tender is the Night was another Fitzgerald book which is also very depressing, very 1920s-ish. So uh, reading books has given me an excellent view on history that I think I wouldn't have otherwise because it's amazing to be able to read in my history book about this time period of like the robber barons and monopolies and, and trust busting and all that and then I go ahead and I can read a book. Um, I'm not sure Babbitt is actually from that time period but Babbitt is sort of covering those topics. It's about this rich businessman who, uh, it's sort of a satire, um, it's about a rich businessman who's uh, I guess like a very staunch Republican, he's in his Rotary Club, he's in this club and that club, he's very civically minded and like this um, business person, and then he has a change of heart, and he becomes a socialist, kind of, and then he goes back to being a Republican. See, again, the way I'm summarizing it doesn't really do the book justice. It's a really funny book, and uh, worth a read, and uh, I think that they should definitely make it into a movie if they haven't already. Then I also like more, uh, you'll see things along with Harry Potter. I like Chronicles of Narnia, Little House on the Prairie, uh, let me see what else. Well, yeah, those are, I guess, the three that are fairly 
traditional children's books that I really enjoy. And um, then one other notable one, uh, there is a short story on here, A Pair of Silk Slippers by Kate Chopin. Her most favorite book is The Awakening, but uh, A Pair of Silk Slippers is... I just really love the ending line. I highly recommend people read that. Well, I won't bore you with every single book that I love, but I'm a huge Alexander McCall Smith fan as well, uh, and um, so you can tell I really enjoy reading different things. There's some more futuristic sci-fi stuff that I should probably put up too, but... Uh, I, I like classics quite a bit, as you can probably tell. Then there's movies as well. Actually, I need to add to my favorite movies. As soon as I finished watching it, you know what's funny? I've never seen Star Wars, um, but the majority of my Star Wars knowledge, I can say, comes from a parody of Star Wars called Spaceballs, which is hilarious. <laughs> um, to give you an example, Jabba the Hutt has become Pizza the Hutt, and um, the... Princess Leia version, Princess Vespa, instead of having actual hair that's like up on the side, she wears earphones that make her look like she has hair on the side. It's a really good movie. Uh, I, I'm just going to watch the rest of it on Netflix tonight. And since it's summertime, uh, I wouldn't be really watching that many movies over the weekend normally. I guess actually, you know what, this summer we have been working a lot harder than we have most other summers because of TEDx Redmond. Uh, I've been having committee meetings and since it is in September we do a lot of our work in the summer, which obviously poses some practical challenges, what with people going to all corners of the world. We had committee members in New York and Peru and Rwanda, so you can tell that coordinating meetings um, could get a bit tough at times. But this year we haven't really taken like a serious summer vacation. I went, my mom, my sister, and I had the chance to go to New York and Philadelphia as sort of a work pleasure mix. So I was uh, um, in Philadelphia emceeing another TEDx event, TEDx Philadelphia Ed, and uh, New York was really fun, but definitely hot during the summer. We managed to escape the heat dome that hit later on, so I still I have very good memories of that. Adriana likes New York uh, quite a bit better than I have to say. All the people and all the heat can be a little oppressive, but I'm you know a fan of it as well. Um, and our summer vacations over the years, I think I've been really lucky, obviously, for the sake that I've been able to travel really widely during not just during the summer but also during the school year because my school is a little untraditional you know with the online schooling and um, classes at my local school that been coming this year but I've been able to travel and so some of our memorable summer vacations we took a road trip to Yellowstone and as we were driving my dad of course being one to go for unusual stuff decided to take this little scenic byway. Well, what the guidebook didn't say was that the scenic byway was winding, long, no other cars, like no other cars, seriously, we maybe saw like one car pass us right by this raging river, and as we drove past, we thought it was raining, but then we realized it was bugs flying into our windshield, so that by the time we arrived in Missoula, Montana, we had a windshield covered in dead bug splat. Yellowstone was the most awesome summer vacation ever. I say that with uh, the bug splat stuff included. Actually, I was probably part of the good memories. Uh, not, no offense to the dead bugs, but uh, seeing the the one thing about Yellowstone that people don't really tell you that often is that the sulfurous smell from the uh, hot springs and the, the geysers and stuff it, it smells really nasty at parts. That can make you a bit nauseous if you don't like the smell. But it was really fun. Uh, pretty awesome. We got to stay at a La Quinta Inn in Missoula, and it's funny because I've gotten to stay at Ritz Carlton's and fly business class. This is when other people are paying for it, obviously. And at the same time, staying at a La Quinta and like swimming in a pool that has way too much chlorine in it, a cheapo hotel pool, is really an amazing experience. That's why I think that no matter how um, no matter how wealthy you are, the opportunities afforded when you're kind of traveling just with your family and uh, and you know staying at not necessarily high end hotels, that those can be great experiences too. So again, money not equaling happiness is quite a bit. So I hope to have many more summer vacations in the future. Working hard on TEDx Redmond was not my idea of a usual summer vacation, but it's turned out to be a really fun one. Uh, well, vacation, I guess stay workcation is what it is. It's been an awesome experience and I can't wait to see what all of our hard work over the summer will bring. Happy, uh, happy August and September following months of the year to everybody, I guess. And I uh, hope you have, you had a great summer vacation. I'm wondering what you all did. Uh, thanks for watching.